So you're going to hook your glassware together as your TA shows you. Uh, you got a rounded, round bottom vial 10 mil with a Hickman distillation head connected with a Teflon uh, connector. It's got blue on both sides. You can see this one's asymmetric. It's narrower on one end than on the other. So it can only connect one way. In your vial, you'll put a stir bar, some boiling stones, and your uh, Michelle's mix. And what you want to do is get that on the hot plate, clamp it, uh, either via the distillation head or the vial, and have it sitting within an aluminum block and get a vortex going in your vial uh, to ensure that the mixture is stirring uh, fairly rapidly uh, before you start heating. Speaking of heating, a uh, thermometer is what you're going to need next. And you're going to clamp this thing similar to how you clamp the pipette column in the chromatography experiment. And when you're setting this up initially, because you're, you may have to adjust a few things at one time as far as the clamp that's going to hold on to the thermometer, like how far out it is from the rack, how high up it is, um, such that if you're not uh, obscuring any, vol any uh, temperature readings that you're going to need. So keep an eye on the experiment. Uh, what solvents you have and what temperatures they're going to boil off at. Um, for example, it would be a poor idea to block off the numbers between you know 70 and 80 for this experiment uh, from your or limit its visibility. Anyway, uh, and also when you're setting this up, the thermometer, if you want to set it gently um, at the base of the distillation head, there's bits of glass that jet out in the Hickman still, and so the thermometer won't go all the way down. But when you actually go to start heating your uh, your uh, solution, your mixture, you are going to want to raise the thermometer a little bit above that height. Uh, you'll see that when you look in the distillation head, there's sort of a well in the surrounding area, or in the outside, and then as it approaches the middle, it kind of rises up, and the thermometer should be above that opening where it rises up. Um, the well that is between the middle and the sides, that's where the solvent will collect, and where you will remove it from. So, after you get this, you can start heating it up, uh, keeping the stirring going. Remember that the number on the hot plate does not tell you the temperature of that you're trying to heat it to, so you will need to go probably to a, you know, 150, 200, or something like that to start. Um, now, another thing you have in your fume hood are these little half blocks uh, for aluminum, the heating blocks. And using the tongs and the drawer underneath the hood, you can easily add and remove these things if you want to either slow down the cooling, increase the slow down the cooling, increase the cooling, um, or increase the heating, um, and or if you just want to take a look and see how much solvent is left. Anyway, uh, fast forward a bit. I've removed the thermometer, and I'm going to remove want to remove some solvent now from the distillation head. So you can grab a plastic pipette, and in order to make sure that you can get over to the edge of that distillation head, wrap the pipette around your finger for maybe 5-10 seconds, hold on to it. That'll put a pretty uh, pretty good curve into it. And then now, you can see that in the experiment, the well is actually pretty much full. Um, when you guys are doing this, you want to remove fractions from this well before this point in time. Um, because you need to plot a graph of it. And if you do it this way, you're only going to have two or three data points on your graph. And guess what? It's not going to look the way it's supposed to. Anyway, remove the solvent, collect it, uh, make sure you already recorded the, uh, the temperature of the thermometer, so you know where uh, that was reading off, and or what temperature it came off at. Clamp it back and wait for it to collect a little more, and then you continue.